Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today's story is about the moon god Chandra called Soma and Brihaspati who is known as Jupiter and Tara. Tara is the wife of Brihaspati. Alright, so in today's story we're going to find one very fascinating and a secret which is revealed by the Soma means Chandra, moon god. Moon God reveals that a woman does not become impure even after the adultery. This may sound extremely strange, absurd, but um, we're gonna see within the story that how he justifies his claim, right? And um, it does make a sense when you apply logic and reasoning behind that, right? So before I begin the story I wanted to make it clear that um, Indra is the king of heaven Brihaspati is the spiritual instructor within the heavens work right and then there all are different devtas angels and we're gonna see about what happens within the moon god Chandra and what happens with the relationship with the Brihaspati. Alright, so let me now begin this beautiful story. Alright. So we find we're gonna see that the birth of the moon god and later on the deeds. Alright. The birth of the moon god Soma is perhaps the most beautiful story in the whole scriptures. The story is unique this story tells us sage Atri being asked by Brahma engage in creation. Atri wanted to acquire the power needed for this and with that intent started a powerful form of tapas. Tapas means higher, longer, steady meditation without ceasing. So Atri wanted to start a powerful form of tapas called Anuttara. The name means the highest tapas beyond which there is no other tapas. Sage Atri was purity itself and such was his commitment to the tapas that he soon reached the highest peaks of spirituality and the ultimate reality, the Brahman, appeared, reflect, appeared reflected in the still lake of him. The tears of joy started flowing from his eyes. The bliss that passes understanding born of the self-realization and as those tears began flowing down his cheeks, story tells us the guardians of the eight direction transformed themselves into the exquisite women and drank up those tears. They were in love with those tears and wanted to conceive the children out of Atri's ecstasy. The women became pregnant but found themselves incapable of enduring the powerful fetuses in their wombs and pushed out of their wombs. Brahma the creator gathered the fetuses and joined them to form a single magnificent child who instantly grew into a youth. This was Soma, the moon god. The creator endowed him with every imaginable weapon and thus empowering him took him to the world, the Brahm Lok, where the Brahm Rishis requested him to make the youth their lord. The luster of the youth grew steadily as sages, gods, angels, and celestial nymphs sang the hymns in the praise. Prajapati Daksha gave 27 of his daughters in marriage to Soma. Later Soma himself born of the tapas entered a period of tapas. His chosen deity was Bhagwan Vishnu. Vishnu was pleased with the tapas and appeared before him and asked him to seek a boon from him. I want to perform a Radsuya sacrifice in the heavens, said the Soma. When I do that, bless me that all the great gods like Brahma should be present in the sacrifice, and I want the trident wielding Lord Shiva to stand guard at the gate of the sacrificial place. The moon god had acquired so much power that his desire, the great gods, had to be at his back and call. The Radsuya Yagna sacrifice began, every celestial attended the sacrifice of the gods. Vasus, Marut, Brahma, Vishnu, Atri, Bhrigu and all. 
as desired by Soma Siva himself stood guard to the sacrifice. And when the Ratsuya ended, Soma gave the three bowls as Dakshina to the priest who officiated in the sacrifice. The sacrifice ended with the Ova Prita ritual bath. Soma stood up glowing in indescribable glory after the ritual bath. The, the goddess or celestial female names present there could not contain themselves. Nine of them fell in love with him instantly. Not only did they fell in love with him, great passion for him raged in their hearts. Blazing lust screaming out from every part of the celestial nymph's body seeking immediate fulfillment. While the gods, the sages and the other guests, guests stood watching aghast, these nine celestial nymphs threw themselves at him openly. All right. They abandoned their husband and openly sought pleasure from Soma. And he pleasured them all as no one else could please pleasure a woman. The gods were infuriated and wanted to curse Soma for his audacious sin, but found themselves powerless to do anything against him. The Ratsuya Yagna sacrifice had made him so powerful and rendered everyone powerless before him. Some say that it was Tara who saw the Soma as he stood in all his glory after the ritual bath that concluded the Ratsuya Yagna sacrifice that she became inf infatuated with him like the nine other celestial names. The Devi Bhagavad Puran which tells us the story in detail. Before we go into that story the word Tara means a star and in mythology all over the world the moon and the stars are closely linked together. In our own mythology, the moon god is wedded to the 27 daughters of Daksha, who are all stars. All right. Tara's husband, Brihaspati, is the planet Jupiter, who pales in the comparison with the lustrous glory of the moon in the sky. According to the Devi Bhagavata, one day Tara went to the house of Soma. Tara saw, Tara was so beautiful, beyond words and a passionate woman at the peak of her youth. Intoxicated with youthful passions, Soma saw the irascible Tara and instantly desired her. And Tara too took one look at Soma and straight away fell in love with him. Carried away by the stormy passion, they felt they neither could nor wanted to resist the fiery longing they felt for each other and indulge into sensuality, sexual pleasure. Following which Tara decided to say, stay at Soma's moon god's house rather than go back to the, her husband Brihaspati. Soma is a moon god and Brihaspati is the guru of all the gods. According to the Vedic scripture, the relation between the Soma and Tara is that of a disciple and his guru Patni. Guru Patni means the wife of a guru. His, his guru's wife. So, an erotic relation between the two as the worst possible sin, a Mahapatak, and it is dreaded sin that the two were indulging in without any compassion, uh, compunctions. Priyaspati waited for a few days for the Tara to come back. When she did not, he sent one of his disciples to Soma's house. But drunk with the passion of Soma, Tara refused to go back to Priyaspati. Days passed and Brihaspati once again sent a disciple asking Tara to go back to him and Tara did exactly what she had done earlier. She again refused to go back to the Brihaspati. This happened again and again and eventually Brihaspati decided to go on his own and take Tara back. Brihaspati was in fury when he reached the Soma moon god's residence. Addressing the moon god, he said angrily, What have you done, you fool? I am your guru and Tara is your guru Patni, means your guru's wife. You can protect her, rever her, but you cannot have any other relationship with her. What you have been doing, keeping her in your house? Were you protecting her or were you having sex with her? Don't you know that for you to have sex with her is to commit one of the gravest sins in the world? You are not fit to live among the gods, Devas. Give my wife back to me and let me take her back to where she belongs. To my home. Do as I say before I lay a curse upon you. Soma laughed haughtily at the enraged words of his guru. He began at, by attacking Brihaspati for losing his mastery over the senses. 
self-mastery. This is what Soma Moon God says. It is only those Brahmanas who have full mastery over their senses and emotions that deserve honor. You seem to have no mastery over yourself and for that reason you cannot curse me either. The curse of a man without mastery over himself will have no effect. As for Tara, Soma continued, she is, she is here on her own. I, haven't, I have not kept her as a prisoner here. She is enjoying herself. When she has had enough of enjoyment, she will come back to you and you can have her back. Let her stay here so long as she wants. What harm can it do? Soma reminded Brihaspati, quoting the scripture. Now, this is the very interesting part. This is when the revelations are made. Soma, quoting the scripture, stated, A woman never becomes impure from adultery. She is purified month after month when she has her period. All right, so what the Soma, the moon god, is saying that when the woman has a period, she becomes purified again and her purity is restored, right? Well, the thing the scripture says that uh, there is no forgiveness without shedding of blood and shedding of blood being, brings forgiveness of sin. So in this case, we find that um, how the women, their purity is restored, right? As per the claim made by the Soma. All right. Brihaspati saw that he had no options but to go back. But at home he was tormented by the longing for the Tara. Soon he was back at Soma's place. This time, however, the watchman who stood guard at the gate did not even let Brihaspati go in. Brihaspati waited long, but Soma did not appear. The furious guru could no more contain his anger and shouted aloud from the gate, You wretch, you vilest of the gods. No one is more depraved than you are. Tara is your Guru Patni, your wife of the Guru. She is like her mother. You have forcibly kept her a prisoner in your house and you have been living in sin with her. Give her back to me this instant or I shall reduce you to ashes. Soma now came out and spoke to Brihaspati with a smile on his face. He said, Why do you talk such nonsense? Your beautiful wife is here because you cannot give her the satisfaction she seeks. And in any case, she is too beautiful for you. She is endowed with every imaginable feminine perfection. Such a jewel of a woman is not fit for a beggar like you. Why don't you take some ugly woman for a wife? She would be fit for you. It has been ordained that exquisite women should have handsome husband. And the Kam Shastra's erotic signs do say that beautiful women should have for their husband beautiful men who are equal them in beauty, youth and prowess. You seem to be totally ignorant of the Kam Sastras. Now go away, I have no intention of giving her back to you. And let me tell you, your course will have no effect on me, for you are in the grip of lust. Insulted, humiliated, furious, Brihaspati went straight to the Indra King of Heaven, his disciple and the Lord of the Gods, and told him what happened. Indra took matters into his own hands and sent a messenger to Soma, explaining to him the evil nature of his relationship with Tara and asking him to give her back to Brihaspati. Indra reminded him of the 27 wives he already had. Seven of his daughter to the moon god as his wife according to some other 28. He reminded him of the celestial courtesans like Urvashi and Menka, the highest, most beautiful looking angels in the heaven. He could have them for his pleasure if he wished said Indra, but this relationship with his wife of Guru was certainly a shame for any man and particularly for a man whose father was a sage like Atri. Soma told him that the whole notion that a woman can own a, that a man can own a woman is wrong. Tara had gone to him on her own and she was happy with him, just as he was happy with her. Tara hated Brihaspati and she wouldn't go back to him on her own. No power in the world was going to separate her from him against her will. The moon god did not forget to remind Indra on his own adultery and the adultery of Brihaspati, which he stated as one of the reasons why Tara hated, hated her husband. This was a challenge to the power of Indra and the gods in general. The Soma, who was so haughty about this power, had to be taught a lesson through power. There's only one solution 
a war against Soma with all the gods on one side and Soma on the other. Shukracharya, the guru of the demons, heard of the problems in the celestial world. He took Soma aside and offered him assistance. If there was a war, he would help him out. The army is gathered, ready for the war. Brahma, however, decided to interfere at the last moment. Brahma was sage Atri's father and hence Soma's grandfather. Soma finally listened to Brahma and agreed to send Tara back to Brihaspati. Tara was given no choice in this matter. She certainly was not happy about this. She had no alternative and reluctantly went back to her husband. Brihaspati was delighted that he got his wife back, taking her, taking her with him, he went home. The story does not end here. Tara was pregnant when she went back. When the child was born, Brihaspati became very happy and made arrangements to celebrate the birth and perform the rituals. But Soma, Soma would have none of it. He laid claim to the child, telling it was born of him. This time it was Brihaspati's turn to refuse, saying the child was his and it resembled him. Once again, the celestial world was hot with anger and the gods and the demons assembled ready for war. This time too, it was Brahma who interfered. He asked Tara to tell the truth, whose son was it? And Tara silently whispered that it was Soma, moon god's son. An embarrassed hurried back to the, her inner apartments. The war was avoided once again. Soma named his son Buddha. Please note that this is not the Gautama Buddha, which is later on who takes a birth on planet Earth. Soma named his son Buddha and it is with Soma that the child grew up. All right. Very fascinating story, guys, we find out today. We see that how this moon god, how he is born out of the tapas of the Atri and how he became so they call uh, Adonis, means extremely enchanting, handsome looking, but very passionate at the same time, right? Now, if you put this uh, spiritual story with reality, what we find is that when night occurs and there is moon in the sky, it dry invokes the desires in the man. If you look at the world, they say the sensuality and most of the sensual indulgence take place at the night. And when we saw today the story that how the moon god is very passionate, so when the moon is up in the sky, how it drives the passion in a man and how it invokes those lusty desires, right? And then if when we look Tara, Tara means a star. So how there is a moon in the sky and then there is star in the sky. And then there is Brihaspati, Jupiter, right? So it's all interconnected. They have these deities who are spiritual, they have an impact upon the humanity on the earth and on all the living being but as soon as the sun rises in the sky right they say dispeller of the darkness destroys the sins and impurities right one who cannot be tainted by the evil of the world so as soon as the sun rises now people feel more motivated and they feel more free energetic positive and these desires how they do not affect as much as they do in the during the night time all right guys so that's pretty much for this story i hope you enjoy this story and for those people who are coming new to the channel i would highly insist upon to subscribe and again thanks a lot and have a great day thank you